Ladies and gentlemen, next comes up a set of three keynote addresses. Keynote speaker from Mumbai, Padmashri Professor Shang Joshi is expected to rush back for an important commitment. So we'll have his keynote address first, followed by that of Dr. Rakesh Gupta from Delhi and Dr. S. Gir Govind from Bengaluru. May I have the pleasure of inviting the chairpersons, please welcome, in the order of appearance, Drs. H.K. Chopra, Rick Levy, Charles Lawson, Anurag Arora, Naveen C. Nanda, Jagat Narula, Samin Sharma, Tarun K. Mittal, Jayakirti Yoganarsim Rao, Colonel O.P. Yadav and G.K. Mani. The first uh, keynote address is on uh, ideal edible oil and cardiovascular disease protection. For the next 15 minutes, I'd like to invite, with the permission of the chair, Padmashri Professor Shang Joshi. He is a professor of endocrinology at Grant Medical College in Mumbai. He also serves as a senior consultant endocrinologist at Leelavati Hospital and Research Center in Mumbai. He is a president of the Endocrine Society of India. Ladies and gentlemen, as this being a keynote address, we will be having just a comment from the chairperson before Professor Joshi flies back for his commitment. Professor Joshi, please. Thank you. So, you know, every year Dr. Chopra tells me to talk on oils because we, are, we still have unanswered questions on edible oils and therefore I am going to allude to edible oils. You know, every time you come here, you listen, what you listen, you learn, what you learn, you adapt. I have disclosure because I have been working on blended oils for some time with Merico, which is the sponsor of this talk. And they have moved from actually a PUFA based system to a PUFA MUFA mix. And the ideal way is to go for blends, but we will talk about that a little later. Fat has always been in controversy. We just heard a debate that somebody talking about LDL and we are not to be LDL centric. In fact, the study which we did a couple of years back, the ICMR INDAP study, we showed in the diabetic population that a low HDL is the most important risk factor followed by high triglycerides followed by LDL. So obviously fat is an energy source. We need it for vitamins. We need it for growth and development. And obviously 20 to 30 percent of our body comes from fat. And we also need it for food taste. So we need to keep it full. And we know we have the sat fat and I don't think the last word on sat fat is still out. In fact, you must have read two, year, two weeks back in the newspapers that a lot of research which made sat fat as a villain was sponsored by the sugar industry. And that led to the rise of uh, obesity and diabetes across the world. And this year's focus for WHO is diabetes. Then of course we had the unsaturated fats, the monounsaturated fats, the, the MUFA, the omega 9s and then we had the PUFAs which is not synthesized in the body and so on and so forth and of course we had omega 3. So selecting the right fat, the good or the bad has always been a problem and therefore selecting the right edible oil has been a bigger challenge and therefore what NIN came out from Hyderabad which is our National Institute of Nutrition from ICMR is we need an oil which is edible, which is frying, medium, which is low on sat fat, has some amount of PUFA and MUFA and has the optimal amount of LA to ALA ratio of 5 is to 1 to 10 is to 1. And obviously they also looked at one more thing that we need a non-glyceride component of that. So obviously 95% of three types of fatty acids we need, sat fat, MUFA, PUFA, but we need to get a little bit of everything. And therefore probably the answering could be blends and that's what I am going to allude to. Now we have different vegetable oils. And the red is sat fat, you can see here coconut oil being the leading there. And very recently you must have read a paper in the Indian Heart Journal. Obviously it has its own biases, they did a two year follow up study which showed that safflower oil versus coconut oil, there was no major impact in differences, but it's full of sat fat and it's used predominantly in Kerala and other parts of South of India. And then of course you have the other spectrum where it's the omega 6, the omega 3, the omega 9 and obviously you need to balance it out and therefore we have a different spectrum of oil, but no single oil provides all the requirements we need. But what has happened in the oil stories also that there are a lot of non-glyceride components, typically rice bran or rhizonal. It lowers cholesterol. All vegetable oils have plant sterols and tocopherols and tocotriretinols, which are vitamins, antioxidants, which are not just necessary for antioxidants in vivo in the human blood or on the cell membrane, but also are necessary for the shelf life. And then of course we have the, the olive oil which has the phenolic acids and the sesame which has this small and cisma oil. So obviously sat fat had some roles, whether it was CVD or diabetes and their role will still be there. We know that decreasing sat fat content can have a challenge on LDL and it had its own impact and diabetes is of course adverse. Trans fats are clearly bad and that verdict is out that we need to eliminate trans fats from our food and that's probably the only single non-controversial thing in fat biology today. MUFA has their own issues, 
they are pro diabetogenic from the omega 3 standpoint they all have some insulin resistance worsening activities but they have some utility in cbd mainly from the mediterranean diets and pufa are very low cholesterol lowering products excellent cholesterol lowering products and they also can lower glucose to some extent so if you summarize oils from diabetes and cbd standpoint we know the challenges with sat fat is they improve hdl but they also have increase of ldl triglyceride and they worsen insulin sensitivity and so does trans fat and if you look at pufas n3 n6 obviously the data is not very conclusive so obviously we need to balance fatty acids no oil is fully saturated on saturated all oils contain some amount of all fatty acids and therefore if you look at the fao the who nin they all say that we need some amount of visible fats and in veget vegetable oils you need to combine them we also know that different compositions dif depend on various growing and processing conditions we know that we have refined and unrefined oil and we know that during refining mainly chemical refining therefore we are now looking at physical refining some of these properties and quantities are lost so these losses are less with physical refining and obviously the plant sterols are largest in the non glyceride component of vegetable oils and the tocols the tocopherols the tocotriretinols carotenes which flavor the compounds constitute a minor fraction of them obviously the efas have oxidative potential so the first myth is pufa is bad so avoid eating foods rich in pufa and that's not probably true we know that pufa is an essential fatty acid biologically very important this in fact i was at esd in munich last week where they concluded that pufa might be useful but pufa has a challenge because it's susceptible to oxidation and it needs to be protected in the indian cooking conditions because our cooking conditions have very high frying point therefore you need to provide them with an antioxidant system which will offer them the in vivo protection second obviously second myth is pufa is obtained from diet to invisible fat and therefore it is not necessary to obtain it from cooking oil that's also probably a myth a typical sedentary indian man will consume 2220 calories calories from fat if you take 25% 576 calories of grams for fat consumed will be around 64 pufa would be around 25 grams so obviously if you look at visible and invisible fat 35 grams and 25 grams obviously only 40% is coming there and there will be some amount of pufa deficit around 11 grams of pufa will be there so obviously the oil which consumed should have some amount of pufa and we need to balance both of them the third myth is that okay we don't know the verdict on oil so let's balance oil let's rotate oils because that may be a way to acquire the balance of fatty acids and get them into diet and therefore as i told you every oil is unique fingerprint every oil has its own molecular signature it will have its own components its own minor health promoting ingredients like originol tocopherols tocotriretinols and therefore the purpose of rotation was to give benefits of different oils this can be achieved through blends also because research shows that if you synergize them just like we do for insulin just like we do for medications you can get the right form of ratios the challenge is because oils in indian cooking is are not the same as western cooking we know cooking conditions can be dry heat and roasting boiling baking sorting grilling that's not something which we use in india then of course we have moist heat like boiling poaching simmering steaming we predominantly use frying and we combine it with stir frying stewing and combination and that's really hazardous so if you look at indian cooking conditions indian cooking basically uses oil from the beginning of the processes typically starting from sorting garlic or ginger with shallots and chilies and onions and obviously there is oil on fire for quite some time so the ambient temperature starts with 120 130 degrees and because frying is very commonly used in indian cooking practices the foods are deep fried and often the temperatures are around more than 150 degrees and obviously the deep fat frying is a process of immersing food in hot oil and this process of cooking and drying produces a lot of dry fruits which simultaneously heat and mass transfer and the flavored compounds are formed and they are retained because for the crispiness and the crust of food and what happens with pufa when you fry it you get aerated you get a lot of fission oxidation volatiles alcohols acids ketones epoxides and what have you so we get a lot of negative products from that and therefore you need to protect pufa in frying conditions when foods are subjected to high temperatures in humid conditions they are very susceptible to oxidation and secondary products of free radical generation are there and it's important to deteriorate this frying condition pufa and to be modified so how can you do that because obviously when we fry the atmospheric oxygen works on the oil and makes it rancid and therefore every manufacturer it is mandated now 
to ensure that these impurities are taken away and add some amount of antioxidants. So antioxidants are really required not for, we know the data on antioxidant on the outcome is very poor, but mainly to stabilize the oil at the high frying condition. And that is really the role and that is the pecking order of it. There are different types of antioxidants. So we really need antioxidants for three things in oils. Of course, we need them for in vivo for all its worth. And verdict on that is still not out and we might get conflicting outcome data because we don't have long term outcome data. But we need inedible oils, antioxidant systems for two things. One, to sustain extreme conditions of frying and two, for better shelf life. And that's the reason vitamin E and many other antioxidants are added and therefore a synergy of antioxidant is required. So obviously if you look at fatty acid as a complementary therapy in vegetable oils, you need the right balance of sat fat, mufa, pufa. We need to be low on sat fat, free of trans fat. We need moderate pufa in oils and we need the right balance of omega 3 to omega 6. That's definite. And we need definitely an antioxidant system to have a better shelf life, stable in frying conditions and probably in vivo. So obviously what do blended oils do? Sugano et al. from Japan was the first person to suggest this concept of blending. Then Australians followed from the Adelaide study. And then of course now in India we have that. And he combined PUFA with MUFA. And he combined safflower with rice bran in a 30-70 ratio. And got a 20-30% to 30 synergistic blend to reduce plasma cholesterol. What Mariko did is the same thing. They ensured that they added antioxidants at stable conditions. This is in vivo data and they ensured that there is a stability over there and they also had a low SOP technology. So the oil when it is consumed through the gut is not absorbed. And if you blend an RBO with safflower with an antioxidant, then the oil uptake is reduced compared to you can see here the virgin olive oil, extra virgin pomace, sunflower, soya or canola, they get absorbed and therefore we want to have less oil. We want to cook in less oil. In fact, the main message should be less than half kg per person per month should be the trend. And also if you look at various antioxidant potentials, there is in vivo data which we have conducted to show whether it is glutathione synthesis, the catalase, the superoxide dismutase, you can see very clearly compared to control the blending makes a difference and obviously it reduces the HSCRP concentration. But do we have a clinical? And as a mechanistic proof of study which we published in the Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, we did a randomized double blind parallel proof of concept trial where we took the blended oil with lifestyle changes and lifestyle changes with regular consumed oil and diet and exercise was uh, there and obviously these were the regular oils like palm oil, safflower oil, corn oils and we compared them, we showed that the LDL cholesterol dropped down compared to other oils it was not that efficient, total cholesterol dropped down, triglycerides came down, oxidized LDL came down, HSCRP came down, homocysteine came down. So that was the first study we did. The second study we published and presented, you know, in May in Orlando and now it's accepted for publication in a reputed journal, which is we compared the blend of 70-30 rice bran with safflower with pomace olive oil because that's the oil which is heated in olive oil because you know that you can't heat extra virgin olive oil, refined olive oil and extra virgin olive oil. And we had a, those three as a control group and it was again in a a parallel randomized controlled fashion study and we looked at lipid parameters, again we looked at cardiac parameters of oxidized LDL, again it was a mechanistic study where we looked at SOD, APOB, APOA1, HSCRP and you can see here very clearly there was a positive impact on the lipid profile as well as the cardiac biomarkers particularly on the HSCRP and this was presented as a late breaker abstract oral presentation at the ACE meeting in Orlando. So obviously no single oil is complete. Every oil will have its own signature of its fatty acid profile. The purpose of rotation can be given to benefit different oils but the same can be achieved through blending it because blending confers synergy which rotation doesn't confer and therefore obviously the synergistic ratios of blends are the way to go. Obviously you can have two oils in one pack and it's usually physically blended not chemically blended so that you get some essential fatty acids and micronutrients rather than sacrificing one micronutrient for a shorter time to get the other. And it helps us to achieve a better fatty acid profile by replacing sat fats with unsaturated fats. Obviously, NIN recommends combination of or blending of two or more vegetable oils. Indian government doesn't allow us to blend more than two. We have petitioned to them that we should be ideally allowed to blend three because that would ideally give us the right sat fat profile for the same. We have challenges with the Indian cooking system, as I told you, 
and obviously they are very susceptible and that's why you need to add antioxidants. So my concluding remarks, I know I have brevity of time, we have just only 53 uh, seconds left, is we, when you choose edible oil, cook in less oil. That's the first message, less than half kg per person per person. It is not just the quantity, it's the quality of oil which matters. And therefore balance sat fat, pufa and mufa. Try to manage a fatty acid combination with a blend because blends are the way to go, but a blend with an antioxidant if it's possible. And ensure that when you blend oils, there is an additional non-glyceride component for better heart health. Obviously, what I have presented are RCTs in small mechanistic studies. Obviously, outcome studies are not easy. As you saw in the Indian Heart paper, which had coconut oil versus the safflower oil, they really could not do a large outcome data. You need large populations, community-based surveys in the free living population for long duration of time, maybe a decade or two. And that might come in the later future. But it's important to recognize that blending is here to stay. Just like we do blending of insulins, probably blending is here to stay in edible oils. Thank you for a patient hearing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, another request for the chairman's one quick comment before, yeah. I'd like to request our chairman, uh, Dr. H.K. Chopra, to please take over and have his comments and then we'll have a presentation ceremony for Professor Joshi before he departs. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard Shashank Joshi, uh, a very eminent person. He has been the president of API and he's also doing a organizing chairman of the next conference in Mumbai very soon. And I think his main thrust is always on omega-3. And he always believes that we must optimize the ratio of omega-3 and omega-6 if we really want an anti-inflammatory response and an anti-proliferative response. I think the point very well taken, Mr. Shank, which you always emphasize that whether it's an edible oil or it is any, any food, the omega-3 has to be given a lot of importance. In fact, there was recently a conference in San Francisco, in uh, San Diego, one day meeting only on omega-3. So a lot of emphasis is there and we need more and more data to really enlighten us how to maintain the integrity of the endothelium anywhere in the vessel right from the head to the toe that will be of great importance. I think we give a big hand to Dr. Shashank Joshi yeah. for his outstanding uh, keynote address Let's and I request all the chairpersons to kindly come forward, yeah. join and give him the token of Award. appreciation. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Professor Shang Joshi is being conferred with the award for outstanding contribution in cardiodiabetes in the world. I request Professor Joshi to please step forward along with the organizing chairman, Dr. Chopra, and other chairperson colleagues of his to confer this award to Padma Shri Professor Shang Joshi. Heartiest congratulations, uh, Professor Joshi. We'd like to thank him as Professor Joshi has to rush back for uh, his other commitments.